Hello and welcome to the UAP channel. Today we are going to go over India. We're going to look at India and I'm going to look at it in the way that, let's say, a mid-level controller, a British mid-level guy with some wearing something between a bowler and a top hat. Um, somebody who's, they're kind of in, in on it, in with it, benefiting from it, but perhaps not really knowledgeable about quite everything, but they'll find out some stuff, and so will you. So let's get started. So the first images coming out of India would be something on the nature of a fairy tale or fantasy, something where it seems like such of an exotic place, it's almost surreal, and I'm willing to bet that uh, for a time, it's as if India didn't exist, like Australia, like New Zealand up until, well, around 1850, just like everything else. Um, I'm not sure what their experience was before 1850, because we don't know much of anything about the times before 1850, but this image is one that uh, I thought would be a good one to start with. Now, let me explain where these images are coming from. They are from the Library of Congress of the United States of America. Now, why do I choose that? Well, I just had to pick something that was not too extensive, but should have a fairly decent record for a giant, important nation state such as India. Uh, in the entire Library of Congress, I found about 135 photographs, so-called photographs, pictures online, available from the years between 1800 and 1899, through 1899. So, uh, as it is, the pictures towards the end of this and the video are from the early 1900s because what was shown in the entirety of the 1800s was limited in certain ways, which will become more clear as I move on. So, here in the second picture, I am looking at uh, what you would expect to see shortly after a major catastrophe, um, just something from the invasion. What I noticed is they're not really showing, um, first of all, much of any erosion. What this reminded me of was um, the uh, place where the Spartans, the 300, fought um, the immortals, the army of the immortals. Um, or it kind of reminds me of the gap around the Red Sea um, where the Israelites were to cross the Red Sea and they were trapped on the one side as the Pharaoh and his army came through and then on the other side by the sea. So that's what struck me here. Um, and it indicates why it took so long for them to get in, perhaps to defeat um, the previous civilization which I believe to be giants that we saw just a minute ago because clearly that guy sitting on the ledge in the last photo was a giant. So you move on and um, you can see these are um, basically drawings, but they're so well done. I think it may be like photo obscura or rather a different type of photo obscura that I would just simply call like, I, I should come up with a term for it. Maybe you can help me on that, but it's, something between photo obscura and a drawing, but the way they do it is they actually had photographs, I believe, but they can't present the photographs to the general public. It certainly wouldn't end up here. It's almost 2020. It wouldn't end up in the public domain of the internet. Uh, it's not very likely. So what they did is they would make a sketch that is similar to photo obscura type hand sketching from the image, the perfect image. And then, um, they may alter some things. So it's kind of like Photoshop. It's kind of like a, a realistic sketch, but then it's also kind of like photo obscura because it's all based on an actual photograph. That's what I think we're looking at here in the beginning. Um, so you can see how it's depicted, and I'm pretty sure that this is uh, the same as all these other drawings that we see, like from the Jesuit societies. They go out and they, they try to uh, give you the impression that these lands are very sparse they're practically treeless barren landscapes of undulating hills of rock and mud 
um, and that the people are, even though they live there all the time, they're nomadic. They like to depict the natives as very nomadic, like they're just ready to pick up and, and leave. They're just ready to bugger out. They're just waiting for the invaders to come so they can have an excuse to bugger off. That's how they're depicted by the invaders to their own people. And, um, yeah, even in the, the background, like the tower, it looks like the, the first horizon there almost goes through the tower. It's like they, they just had to draw that in like that. Um, but this is nothing like how it was, and you'll see. So in the next picture, you know, they do, they have to acknowledge the fact that there are some heavy so-called megalithic structures that are permanent and they are, well, buried in some kind of debris or some, some kind of catastrophe, flood event, something like that. And the invading forces are always portrayed as civilized, um, peaceful, friendly, just happening by, and then the few natives, they're just, they're just sitting on bones and stones knocking that knocking them together trying to make sparks or excitement for themselves they're so bored they have no skills they have no technology they're just sitting there waiting to be invaded sitting around of course the you know, the brits have the cannons they lug them all the way over there because they're so useful and they're just yeah they're they're so heavy but they go up and down hills when you just have camels and men it doesn't matter and they're just these big, there's just a big, mostly empty, barren landscape, just waiting to be, to be cultivated into a lush, uh, fruitful land, um, waiting to be populated by civilization. Because the few scattered nomad natives there are just, they're just hoping somebody will come along and teach them about life. And is there more to life than sitting cross-legged banging stones and bones together, sitting Indian style, actually, um, just knocking things together. And then there's a guy down in the bottom right corner and he's, he's scared, you know, he's, he's nuzzling up with the scorpions and the little snakes and things in this little shaded area because there's no trees, there are no trees. It's not that the Europeans would come and do anything to make the trees go away. There just weren't trees. They, they hadn't invented trees in India yet. Um, they hadn't discovered that. Um, they needed, you know, like they needed the Europeans for that too, probably. You can detect my sarcasm. I'm laying it on pretty thick. So how do you get around? Well, there may have been talk of an airline, which may have existed, <laughs> but they make it a caricature and make it seem ridiculous. But that's later on. So uh, one of the earliest things I see uh, is from Puck magazine. Okay, it's Puck, P -P Puck with a P, not an F. I know how it looks up there on the top of the page, but it's a Puck, as in hockey puck, but actually it's as in Puck, the main character from William Shakespeare's uh, Tempest, I think, and um, for which there was an opera written by Mendelssohn. Uh, one song from that is A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is an excellent piece of work. It's the best thing that I know of from Mendelssohn. He was a great composer. Nevertheless, I digress. I could be wrong about some of those little facts, factoids, but I've done so much research, I'm not going to research that. So now I want you to see, there's someone squeaking a chair there. That's what you heard. <laughs> now I want you to see, um, so they're saying, well, England, you know, England's gone too far and they're taught they're, they've built their empire up too high on all those useful cannons and the usefulness of the cannons are very useful and they can get you to a lofty spot, but you can only go so high before it all topples over. Yet, India hadn't even been introduced to the world. So, I thought this was interesting, this drawing. First of all, it's almost like camera obscura. Sometimes I call it photo obscura. It's camera obscura. Um, but it's probably a sketch. But anyway, it shows the reality of the fact that, you know, the Brits who are over there, um, they fell in love. You know, the Indian women there are... I think lovely, so uh, I'm not sure. This was with the other stuff. It it looks kind of Polynesian to me in the, the dress and everything, the style. But apparently it's Indian. Um, either way, I'm sure that uh, they were enamored by the beauties over there. 
And um, so that's the kind of thing that comes back verbally. You know, you can't suppress that important knowledge. <laughs> so here's the first photograph. All right. And what, well, the rubber pontoons and um, the rubber tree, okay, is a big deal. Anyway, this is from an exhibition and it's from uh, the Indian, what is it, the, the Indian rubber boat. But they displayed it, I think, in the Paris Exposition and the Crystal Palace, one of those types of impossibly great buildings. And you see, okay, there's like a royal family or there's like an upper caste or class that uh, they, deal, they deal with. And so um, the first photos that come out are all together in this group. And uh, they depict India in kind of a much more real sense, but they do their best to obfuscate and basically just flat out conceal what has happened in the recent past. Um, as the, these are all from about 1890. It took all the way till about 1890 before these photos started surfacing. Um, at least what ended up in the Library of Congress. Um, because I'm sure that the United States would ha want to have intelligence on what is India doing, or what is Britain doing in India, and how is all of that working out, how, what's transpiring. And so some of that, some of those records would be photographic evidence, so it makes sense. Um, so, so you, here you have this, um, uh, what do they call it, the red fort, or the red brick fort, something like that. It's just, it's immense. I've been looking at these different buildings that are supposed to be the, the biggest, I'm, I'm looking for like the biggest single structure made of these red bricks, and I've found some that have close to a hundred million of the red bricks in the single building. Now this one, I'm not sure, like if it's, it could be less than a, a million, but it could be way more, so I'm not sure. Officially it's not the biggest, so. but they've got cannons out the wazoo, they're all rusted, which I find interesting, and then they're on rails, and then You'll just notice in a lot of these photos, there just aren't very many people around. And of course, the Taj Mahal looks pretty well doctored, especially in the background. The Taj Mahal itself looks like like it's dropped in there, like like a like the Monty Python style of you know cut and paste animation. You know, they have this place called the Garden of Eden, but you know. These are photographs. They're just heavily doctored. There are limits, however, as to how much they can doctor. Now, those are pretty big red bricks. I didn't know what that was. It looks like a wheel, like a rim. Um, interesting that it's a lot of red bricks. And the city is dead, empty, vacant. They have the vanilla skies. You can't see anything in the horizon. It's amazing how they manage to snap every pick I'm in a crater on the top of a tall hill, just like on the moon and all the moon photos. There's the horizon is right up against you practically. Well, it's not to that extreme here, but the horizon should, you should be able to see a lot more in the distance, especially in a mountainous region such as India. They didn't have smog. Why does it look smoggy? Anyway. All right. So now into the next one here, we have, um, looks like Yodi ladder lean in the bottom middle left there, but, um, you see a lot of erosion, a lot of dilapidation. Start to see some people, they're all right on the coast, like as if they're getting out or being dropped off. And I, I assume it's the ladder, not the ladder, not the oldie ladder, but the ladder uh, that they're being dropped off, oddly enough. Because the city, to me in these photos, the city looked empty, you know. Um, and then they get, re they get introduced somehow uh, in, on the coast and through on the rivers, you know, they get deposited 
from the boats. Um, they had train tracks everywhere, but they weren't really working. Now this was weird. Like, okay, there's this red thing. There's someone sitting on it with this like blackened face. Um, they don't, it looks like a naked person in a towel. And then I'm looking at this booth and it has like these drains. It's like, I don't know if they do sacrifices on there. It looks like blood drains down this little channel and ugh. Yeah, I don't like the looks of it. I just don't. Um, on the back left, well, on the middle left, you can see they, they hung some things to cover up the windows, but that looks like, like French Renaissance architecture right there. And they have some weird walls and the, the street level is all over the place in these photos, you'll see. So here we are by the river. Um, we've looked at some of these photos. Uh, I think they're from the French collection, but we're looking at the American collection, so they're a little different. Uh, it's, I recognize the area. Um, here is, Cal I think it's Calcutta. Um, they are on the river and there's just a lot of um, devastation in some of the areas. This area doesn't look too bad. Um, I was trying to make sense of what these buildings are and it seems like, like they have these very ornate caps. I wouldn't call them domes, they're more like pyramids on the top, and there has to be a purpose to it, perhaps technological in nature, but I think it's symbolic in the sense that it represents maybe a city, because maybe their cities looked like that. And so if you were traveling, okay, you're gonna get on the ferry to this other city, the boat that goes to that city, you know, they make the booths where you pay and collect your tickets and get on the boat or whatever, or whatever it was, maybe not even a boat, it could have been an airship or something like that too. Um, and you would, just, you don't have to read, you just, okay, you see the city, they have it pretty well modeled in the, in the rooftop of the place where you get on, or embark or disembark. And then they have these um, umbrella things, you'll see a lot of those all over. In the background, I saw some really huge steps, and it just looks, it's interesting how they have these structures all the way down the river, and a lot of stuff is just like buried, and there's a lot of erosion, but the really finely built structures, you don't see them building anything like that. Um, and it's just layer upon layer. Uh, certainly the place was inundated. Uh, so we moved on to the next photo here. There's a boat, a lot of umbrellas, a lot more people, and some strange stuff in the background. It looks like maybe a tree, trees growing out of the rooftops. But there's some things up there, they almost look like kites or who knows what. Um, they have a big antenna thing sticking out, but it has a flag on it. You can't see what the flag is because what's on the flags never really makes sense. Um, there's more from that earlier photo. You can see a little more detail on that booth, whatever the heck that thing is. Um, but over on the right hand side in the middle, behind the tree in the background, you can kind of see it's like a sideways, it looks like an American flag to me. 13, you know, the stars and the stripes, like what is that doing there? I thought that was strange. So here we are by the river again. Look at all of these, the buildings are just amazing. They don't look like they're in very good repair, but certainly they were on a building free like just they were spastic builders at one point but all you ever see them doing in these photos is scrummaging around in the dirt literally just sitting around nothing it's just, i mean i don't even know if they were already there or if they were moved in because they don't seem to know but um i wasn't there so i don't know but okay just based on the photographic evidence it just looks like uh it's it's like one of these Where's Waldo things, but not with people, just with architectural features. There's so much going on in these photos. But again, you see the, the further down you go in the layers, the, the taller the windows are and the taller the doorways are. If you were actually designing a building, you would probably do it the opposite to avoid having to do so many stairs, I would think. Um, but whatever, either way, it's a lot of amazing architecture. Some of these things are really tall. You, I'm, I'm constantly amazed at how many different buildings were the tallest at one time or another. And I think um, it was just a matter of everything getting introduced after 1850. So 
And the Great Pyramid of Giza holds the record for 2,000 years. And then, what was it? The cathedral at Strasbourg held it for a really long time. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 everything's... But in these old pictures, there's a lot of stuff that looks very tall. And just for all this construction, you just don't see that much life. Yeah, they have a lot of people by the river, but gee whiz. And the streets are pretty well filled up. But look, in, on every street, you see the rails. And you can see the utility pole with the insulators on it, supposedly holding telegraph wires. But even that would be kind of against the narrative to think they had telegraphs, you know, in the 1880s, 1890s over in India. But they're all over the place. But I think they're more than just that. I think they're also to power the electric rail cars, which were certainly there. Now, you'll see them here. Here they are being pulled by, well, one is being pulled by a horse on the rails. It is clearly an electric streetcar. I have no doubt about it whatsoever. It has the, the booms on the top, you know, and then in the picture further down, as we zoom out here, you can see the lines, the wires, the pole, the utility poles holding the wires, but the events of the takeover or the catastrophe, whatever it was, was um, rendered their electrical power inoperative. But they're relegated to just sitting around in the dirt. Um, and there's just piles of debris and dirt everywhere. But the buildings, they can't hide the majesty of the buildings and the immense scale, the civility, the size, it's just incredible. And then the fact that they're buried in debris, completely buried really high in, well, what's a mud flood if the land is really, really dry? Well, it's like this. It's a dirt flood or whatever. They have the big arches and then what looks like Greco-Roman architecture in places as well. And the layers go deep. Of course, you go really deep and you find the antediluvian stuff. They, I'm sure, would say, the historians would say, that's all carved from that rock. But I'm not buying it. It's obvious to me that it was cast in the mineral deposits and over time, after it was laid down by water and silt and sediment, and then it erodes away, and all they have to do is, they maybe look like carving, but they're just knocking away the the casing, you know, around it. And they have, you know, stairways to nowhere and the steps are really huge if you look at that. There's like a broken piece of metal. I mean, that these are like machining gears or things like that that are huge. It's like a big wheel off in the distance. These are like, they could be rooftops. Um, looks like broken statues, all kinds of interesting stuff. A lot going on in these photos. I don't want to spend too much time just looking at them, but sometimes I have to stop and say, just look at this. I mean, there's a lot going on. And try to wrap your head around what you're seeing. And it's... Sometimes you have flashes of like, oh, this is like a, a factory with big machining parts. and But no, it's like... The, tops of buildings where it's got the stepped roof and no oh, no and they were building looks like statues or oh wait that's not it they just have to toss around different ideas until you get it but here this is just like the Arc de Triomphe or whatever type stuff they do the same things the Dennis Arch it was torn down it was in New York City I think it was torn down in 1905 just like the Arc de Triomphe um, and then here's like an arch going into a like a mountainside, it's a. They may, they may try to convince you know, that it's carved out of the stone. Just don't believe it for a second. This is just something buried, probably a building, buried in Noah's flood. That's why the doorways are so big. Even that smaller one, which may have been added later, is still very big because I think people just shrunk, shrunk, shrunk. Now this could be, this could be New York City. This could be Des Moines, Iowa. This could be San Francisco, London, Paris. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> where it is in India, but it's like Bombay or Calcutta or something like that. Could be Lucknow, I don't know. Uh, here's a temple, um, 
what I wanted to point out in this photo is in the background, the fence. You know, everything's like, okay, dirt floor type stuff, but look at the fence in the background. It looks very, there's something about it that just looks very modern and technological. Just very well built and kind of out of place with all these other things. Oh, I said 1890 earlier. A lot of them are 1890, and then there's the, those were the ones that were kind of drawn, and then what we're seeing now is 1895. So this guy I thought was kind of a giant. And again, they have the rails in place. They probably had, they had the, the steam engines, I believe, and then they had the electric rails. So, so for long distances, you'd have the steam engines, and for short distances, you have the electric rails. It's very environmentally friendly and easy to work, you know? Not sure what that's about. There's uh, this university, though. Um, and again, they're just, what it, they have their own university. Have they learned anything? Not much. They just have learned how to sit around in the dirt. Although there are some really cool things going on here. Something like you could make a YouTube channel out of doing this stuff. Um, in the bottom left, you have, <laughs> it, it looks like a monkey dressed up in human clothes riding a dog right on the back of a dog. And that's pretty awesome. Whatever university major course that is, I'd say is a good one. And I thought, oh, you're not going to see any women in the university because they, they weren't so progressive, I guess. But you do. And that's a hell of a palm there. I mean, that's lush. So they, they you have to take care of things. It's not all arid. It's green. And then there's a wanker there with a gun. Kill, you know, buzz kill. Um, but yeah, that could be London in the background, or Big Ben. That could be Ireland. You know, universities there. It's, uh, huh. and it's in India. So they, they, I'm sure the Brits would probably like to take credit for that. But I mean, they had been there a while, but there's no, there isn't that much evidence of them doing stuff. I think they just kind of got credited for like building these things, but I'm not sure that they did. I think, I think they're much older than what they say. I mean, the story with those is that you have the cathedrals and all this stuff. You you can't have that story and then say you invade a country or go into a country like New Zealand or whatever and then you build the same thing when the same kind of structure supposedly took 200 years to build in Europe. They didn't have any better equipment at the time because everything got better like starting after 1850 but, but that kind of heavy lifting equipment, that stuff took longer of technology. So this is definitely antediluvian. I see buried buildings or whatever. Um, it's called elephant caves, I think. Here you see the rail lines plain as day. Plain as day. Uh, it kind of looks like they're building something on the right, but it could be tearing down. It's just hard to tell. Um, kind of a partial building, but the palm trees are very tall here. Everybody looks happy. This may be a much older photo. Um, yeah, this architecture, I just, I just am continually amazed at the architecture. And then the way the people are dressed and walking, it's kind of like a uniform again. Um, they seem pretty well off and ha they're not looking at each other though. I don't know. I guess it's normal. Um, so, so I had to go outside the Library of Congress eventually just to be able to find some photos that told a little bit more of a story. And, uh, yeah, I'm seeing some horses and carts and things like, they're not going to build a building like that, uh, from those things. So here I'm zooming around. Um, I thought like, what is that? Is it a reflection of something that they edited out? Because when I go up. See those two? It's like two dark spots, so it'd have something coming down from it, and then you go up, and you just don't see it in the photograph. But just look at this. I mean, what the heck happened? I'm sure they could say, oh, well, it's just erosion. Maybe there was an earthquake and landslide or something. But look at the strength of these structures, and they're just busted up like, like somebody pulled the carpet out from under them. And there's this big, like, robot dude laying there with glowing eyes. I don't know what that... It's pretty cool looking, though. But yeah, the steps are out of out of proportion. And then, you know, they have these shield things that are umbrellas, I guess, hanging on the walls. Tons of people again. By the riverside, you don't see as many in the 
or any signs of life in the city. There's a lot of big buildings in the background. They look kind of edited to me. Um, it looks like, you know, a lot of people like either ready to leave or they got dropped off and they don't know where to go or what to do with themselves type thing. I don't know. But you see some shanty crap buildings built on top of some amazing, wonderful architecture. And that tells you the tale right there. If it was the same society that built the architecture underneath as is building these shack, shanty shacks on the top, then I would be surprised because that's just, it doesn't follow. It's not logical. It doesn't really fit. I, uh, I don't see what the structure was. I mean, it kind of looks like, like it could have been like a castle or fort type thing, but it's pretty well demolished. It's just hard to tell. And interestingly, behind it are like these kind of worn out buildings a little bit. It's like they must have been more buried in the past and then the it's been eroding away over the years. So I don't know that the Brits had anything to do with it, but um, it seems like it was some years ago. Um, could just be river flooding, but the other areas aren't as flooded, so. All right, so and then we get this footage farm stuff. So this is harder to fake because it's so many different photos. And you see there are a lot more people there, a lot more. But it's weird, the stuff they're doing, because here this lady has a doll. It's like they're, like, wouldn't they, why don't they have, and then I start looking around, it's like, I don't see that many children, you know? So, I thought that was weird. Skipping ahead here, you see rail lines. I just don't wanna. All right, so then the next video, here they are. <laughs> the wrecking ball bounces off. But uh, we're just gonna look at London for a little bit and then I'll end the video. But it's, it's kind of an introduction to to India and then you know there's so much London has so much to do with India but why like how does that even make sense at all how has it ever made sense that England at one point controlled almost every country in the world including the United States you know it was the English colonies originally so like how does one island nation pretty much just dominate the whole world. It doesn't make sense. But I guess Rome is just a city and they dominated the world. So um, it was just fun to go through and kind of look at some of the excuses that they have for tearing down their own old architecture. Um, but, but that's about all I wanted to share. So it's kind of a quick one, just an introduction to India and a couple of cool, funny things. And... Um, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for making this possible. If you haven't considered being a Patreon, please do and help support the channel. Um, I've sold now one copy of the pre-ordered book and then I've sold a mystery box of unpublished content. And so I could tell you what's going in that box, um, but then it wouldn't be a mystery. But that was also um, an offering I've had on the website for a while, and I sold one. So thank you for that. And um, besides supporting the channel... Difficult it would be. It seems like most people do it in nicer weather. So uh, with that, um, I would say just, oh, and subscribe, like, comment, thumbs up. It really does help if you make the effort to comment. I think 
if there is any playing around with the numbers, and I know there is, I think it would be a lot harder to do if um, a higher percentage of people hit the like button and commented, because you can go back and kind of, to an extent, certain extent, you can go back and check that. So, and uh, be sure to subscribe too, also to my other channel. So again, thank you and have a good one. Bye-bye.